Hello, welcome to my Christmas ornament video. I'm going to do this one in three parts. And I'm making a big batch of them. So you get to see a streamlined process. Let's start with the bulb. I'm going to grip it between some standard jaws here in the chuck. I've got everything set up to streamline. I drilled it and everything ready to go. I like to rough down with a skew here. Finger on the bottom checks for round. Not yet. Try again. Not yet. That'll do. I'll we'll knock off the corners to start the sphere shape with the tip of the skew. Flip it over and get some more defined shapes. Feel free to use whatever tool you're comfortable with here. Especially the excuse here can be challenging. Just works nicely for me. Here the parting tool defines the limits of this piece. Pointing the skew knocks off the corners. Here comes the heel. Now you start to see the bulb shape. Leave plenty of wood between the bulb and the headstock at this point in time. I'm slow the lathe for drilling. Here comes my drilling jig that shows me how far in I am. I apparently didn't slow the lathe enough, as you can see by the smoke of some burning happening. Drill to exactly that depth proportionally. Any further in your bulb will probably break off. Any less, you'll have more hollow until you. Now I put the tailstock away, bring up my hollowing tool, and turn the, the shot back on. Bring the lathe up to speed, and start hollowing. Hollowing here is just to lose weight. I don't need perfectly thin walls. But it will help the lift in the elements of the piece. Having my shot back on hanging from the string at just the right distance really helps me quickly get these chips in. I hold the tool in just such a way to kind of scoop the chips into the shot back. Because with the way it's spinning you can't just you can't just suck them all out. So from the depth hole I work out the sides and then finish and it's going to scoop along the inside of the piece. Just for flow and continuity. This doesn't take too long. Don't go any further than the hole you get through. From the hole to the side, come back, and be done. Just like that. Turn the shot back off, all the way to the wheel, bring me back my tail stop for the drill bit. To the rest around. Let me use this parting tool in a clever way. It has a concave grind on the top of it that allows me to use it as a scraper to transition this curve from the top of the bowl down to a stem, and this stem needs to be smaller than the diameter of the drill bit. Not a lot smaller, but definitely not bigger. So I'll use the top of this parting tool as a scraper, transition the curve, slow the lathe, get the drill bit in, and use that to part off. This leaves a little bit more wood that at the headstock end of the bowl. But not too much. Now let's make a whole slew of button tops. Obviously you'd approach this differently if you weren't making uh, a whole bunch. We'll rough a spindle of a contrasting wood to round with whatever tool you choose. Using those calipers with a slightly rounded nose, make a bunch of properly sized tenons. Cut them up however you feel safe, and let's mount them in some pin jaws with just the tenon.
I like to use a small spindle gouge here. It helps me stay out of the chuck jaws. And little moves like that are, are possible. I like how a gouge can just peel away end grain. I like my buttons to be a little bit, have a little bit of a pawn from, uh, shape from a chess set. And then maybe an additional feature, like this little bead in the middle. If you're making a whole batch of these, you can really explore some shapes. Toy around with some themes of hard geometric lines or soft flowing curves. Burn lines in them. Coloring, texturing. The skew makes a little dimple just to make starting this drill bit easier. I'm going to glue a wire in here later so you can hang this from whatever you may hang it from. Now it's time for finish. A little bit of friction finish left on this paper towel. Buffs on nicely. And I call that button top done. Now check it for fit on any one of the bulbs. Maybe just the one you're making. Now let's finish the bulb. You could have done that before the button top, but this is how I did it. I've got two cones ready to press together as a friction fit to hold this. Starting with 150 grit sandpaper, you can see it really just smooths out any ridges. Some fresh 220 treats you well. Keep the, keep the pressure just right so you don't split your hollow form here, but you don't want it slipping. It just takes little adjustments like that. On to 320. Then with the paper towel, a dab of this friction finish. Don't flood it on too quickly or you'll get sprayed. Another dab. The first one allowed finish to soak in. This next one is a top coat that you want to cure with friction. That's all you need to do. If you're doing a batch, you don't even have to stop the lathe with this mounting setup my button top on that matches. And now I need to make a blank for the finial. These are what they look like. Start with a square piece. Make sure it's not too long. If your finial by the time you're shaping it is too long, it's going to affect, you're going to make something that's too weighty, that doesn't get thin fast enough. It won't be elegant. Well, it may be, but you'll have a challenge. Size the tenon with the caliper similarly. Now I'm going to rough the blank down to just above that size. I don't want much of a shoulder. I have a crisp, well-finished hole on the bulb. And I want this as skinny as possible. So I'll do a nice finishing cut right up to that shoulder, then rough just to lose weight from there on with these peeling cuts. That's what one looks like. You can leave the lathe running. If you're doing a batch one, if you've got a good fit, move on. Now we need to shape the finial some drama to this piece. Get it mounted in the pin jaws. Start roughing down. I've got you zoomed in enough where you can see a little better than I can, so you'll get to see my margin for error here. On these ornaments, I'm exploring a theme of a couple small details near the tip, and then swooping curves, 
blowing up some larger details up near the base. The key is keeping things crisp and dramatic. Thins very thin. This lends to a visual weight. For this curve here, I'm going to go for sort of a turnip shape. It's sort of a half bead that transitions into a long concave flow. Transitions from convexity to concavity what really shape the grace and the shape of a piece like this. Peeling cuts gets me set up for a, a cove area up near the base, and we're just about done. Another bead happened to want to be in here. I didn't argue. Just making the transitions flow. Crisping up that little bead. This wood is so forgiving, it needs very little sanding, so just a splash of 320 practically just wipes loose fibers away. Here comes the dab of that friction finish. In these small diameters, it's easier to let it cure. You'll even hear a little squeak from the end. go. Just a little assembly left. And here's a whole batch of them. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoyed.